you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the 1010 podcast, where we talk about life and the abundant life that we can have through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That is where it's at, people, that personal relationship with him. So if you don't know him yet or you haven't given your life to him, today is the day. I'm so excited that you're here and I have a special guest with me. Jordan Shipley is in the house. I know that you are gonna be inspired, encouraged by his story, the goodness of God in his life on display. So let's get started. Yay. Yes. <laughs> Here we are, Jordan. I'm yeah. so glad that you have said yes to being on this podcast. Yeah. Um, Excited to be here. You're a man of many talents. Thank you. And I, <laughs> I think you're the man behind the curtain. You know, the movie Wizard of Oz. Yeah. The man behind Pay the no curtain. Attention. Pay no the attention. man behind the curtain. Uh, yes. You, are, you make a lot of things happen behind the scenes. And But you have done pastoring, mm -hmm. um, worship pastor at Cedar Park for yep. a season, yep. helping out in youth, young adults, yeah. all those ministries at the school, <clears throat> um, led the, you taught the worship class at Cedar Park Christian School for a yeah. season. Yeah. And um, I love that you, you love to study books or mm -hmm. study and read books yep. and be a very learned person. And then you love to share that information with people. <laughs> Whether so, they want it or not sometimes. No, I think, you know, everybody yeah. wants it. You just have to find the right. <clears throat> sure, sure, sure. Um, but now you're in the season of doing uh, video production. Yeah. And, and you've helped a ton with my podcast. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I think I, I gave you a shout out at our very first yes, uh, podcast, remember, season yeah. one, yep. because I remember that famous conversation, not famous conversation, but a conversation we had at the church mm -hmm. just, and you were like, Hey, have you thought about doing a podcast? Yeah. And look at us now. I remember. Yeah. And now, yeah, no, it's, it's crazy thing because it hasn't been that long, but it feels like so much has transpired, yeah. you know, you know, dove right in and I know. you've got how many episodes now? Uh, well, I did like what, 19, the first season, I think. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. A lot in a very short period of time. Yeah. Like every week yeah. I made it a goal. I was like, you know, some of my favorite podcasts that I subscribe to do yep. a weekly mm -hmm. show. Yeah. And so I thought that's doable. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And I've just taken it like, honestly, just one day at a time yep. as the Lord leads. And he's been so faithful to, cool. you know, open up opportunities. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. I look forward to it. I think I was telling my husband, Jay, I was like, I think I love it because I'm in charge of it. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. I can just do what I want to. It's true. You, you do have a certain, about, certain freedom that comes yeah. from that. So. And the way I look at it and what I tell people, they're like, well, what if, you know, I say too much or I shouldn't talk about that. I was like, listen, if people aren't enjoying it, they can just turn it off. It's true. It's I mean, very true. how many things are on YouTube that no one's watching. <laughs> oh man, a lot. Yeah, no. So, I mean, that's kind of the nature of content. There's choices, there's options for everybody. And so, yeah. you know, there's a audience out there for you. And yeah. it seems like people are starting to really engage with it and, yeah. and really enjoy the episodes. And so yep. I'm just glad that you did it partly selfishly because, you know, I, I joke with Steve uh -huh. that he is a decision architect. That's kind of the title that we, <laughs> we gave him. And yeah. he somehow gets ways, finds ways to make people do things. And I was just glad that I, I was able to nudge you just a you little bit. And influenced. Uh, I feel like I, I really followed in his footsteps in that way. You're so. an influencer. <laughs> yes. You lead uh, by manipulation. That's no, good. <laughs> no, but no, I'm, I'm glad you're doing it. It's been cool to watch the journey from the outside. So thanks. Yeah. Well, I think that God has given all of us, um, an audience of some degree, right? Mm. Big or small. Mm -hmm. And he's given all of us, um, a, a, a people that, you know, are around us, our community of people that we have influence over. <clears throat> and, um, I think sometimes, or I know for myself, uh, just thinking like, well, if I'm not going to, you know, reach thousands, then is it really worth doing? Mm. Um, but what if God only called me to reach one person, mm -hmm. you know? So I think being faithful in what God has called you to do, yeah. um, regardless of what the outcome is going to be yeah, and let that be up to him, whether, you know, it's thousands of followers or subscribers, or if yep. it's just a hundred or if it's just 10, I don't yeah. know. I think just to be faithful to what God has called you to mm -hmm. and be okay with, you know, how he wants to use it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I think I, it kind of reminds me of a story. I heard a pastor who was talking once about, you know, leadership and he said a similar, similar idea, just that, you know, you can be 
leading a church of a hundred mm -hmm. as a lead pastor and be doing everything that God wants you to do, yeah. you know, and you could be leading a church of a thousand and be doing everything God wants you to do. It's kind of like the yeah. parable of the 10 minus mm. to one, he gave one to another five to another 10. Yeah. And you know, at least with the five and 10 people, it's like, they were both, he called them both faithful. You right. Know? And, and so, yeah. 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 God's measurements are not the same as man's yep. in terms of success. It's true. Um, yeah. But so we've so, got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Come on. Not on the world. Come on. So um, <clears throat> what is your favorite worship song right now? Like what's your jam? <laughs> <laughs> right now. <clears throat> it's funny you ask that because I, it, it changes all the time. And I probably for the, there, I had a stretch where I wasn't listening to as much new stuff. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like going back to stuff, you know. I, so I love Phil Wickham. He's kind of one of my go-to's. Yes. So I, I like his stuff He's a lot. So but great. even just this last week, I've been listening to that Elevation song "More Than Able" like mm -hmm. on repeat. And my wife's starting to get annoyed. She's like, "Will you please stop playing that song? I'm so <laughs> done with it. I'm just like humming it at the dinner table, and you know, wherever I go." But now that, that's probably been. I, if I had to pick like a, a current favorite, I guess that's probably it. So more than able. Yeah. What's your favorite part of it? Um, you sing it for us. I th I don't really want to sing it, but uh, <laughs> people would love it. Raise your hand if you want to hear Jordan sing. No, it. no, Julian's you not. Are more Come on, than able. able. Do 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 do. Probably the bridge. <laughs> yeah, that's my that's my that's my favorite part. That uh, I'm not gonna sing it because Tiffany Hudson sings it. And her oh. voice is a lot higher than mine. So, yeah. But oh yeah, uh, who sings that song? Well, let's let her do yeah, it. Yeah, let's do it. So <laughs> I hate when people say that. That's uh, rude. I know. I know. So, but yeah, that's, that's probably been the one that's been on repeat, uh, lately. So nice. Well, yeah. that's a good one. Mm -hmm. that elevation. Yeah. Well, let's see. We have known each other. We were talking before we started here, um, since the early nineties. Yep. <laughs> now we're in the early 2020s. Ugh, crazy. I don't want to do that math, but I know. <laughs> Yeah, I think I my memory of you like when when we were younger, mm. like I'm older than you by yeah. a bit, and so not that much. But, but. you and Luke, your cousin, yep. uh, being in Sunday school, yep, when you guys were third graders, yeah, third grade, and I was in high school. <clears throat> I got to teach your Sunday school class, and yeah, I just remember being fun. I thought we had fun. I hope that you learned something. I thought it was fun. I loved the sword drills. Yes, so we'd always so, have to like race to find a Bible verse the fastest. I feel like Put I was the usually Bible second. On your shoulder. Um, yep. Did you do sword drills, Julian? I think yeah. everyone does sword drills. <laughs> I, well, I don't think I've ever done it since then. That's uh, right. At least not as well, like an organized activity. Yes. So, uh, no, but I always loved, I always loved that part. And I remembered that I, you know, I don't remember a whole lot about that class, but I feel yeah. like I do remember being a little disappointed whenever it was just Ben and not you. And so, because oh. he didn't do those. So. Oh, thank you. I'll take that. Uh, yeah. Hopefully he's not watching this. He's I like, know. come on that punk. <laughs> I was nine. What did I know? Yeah. So. Well, I was just thinking like sword drills today. Yeah. With people's phones. Like, how would you, have you noticed that? Like I, sometimes I <clears throat> like have to be really intentional about yeah. um, opening my actual Bible. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing how quickly you forget where things are when you're oh, always yeah. using your phone. I don't like reading on my phone. Yeah. Not like books or the Bible yeah. or things like that. I, I got to have real, real stuff. Yeah. Real paper. But I mean, sometimes, you know, it's yeah. like. Yeah. For referencing something or on the go. Or like yeah. when I go to church, like bringing my Bible to church, I want to and I try to, but it's, I have a big Bible and it's like bringing it. I just feel like. like yeah. I, I just, I bring Do you it. bring your Bible to church? Yeah. I don't always remember. Sometimes I yeah. forget to grab it, but yeah. uh, I try to, because uh, yeah. I, I just like the tactile feeling. Mm -hmm. And I, I also have kind of a big Bible, but mm -hmm. I just remember that, well, I, I remember a couple months ago debating, should I bring it? Should I not? And I was like, eh, Jay's got a big Bible. He brings it every week. I guess I probably can. Good. <laughs> He's got a shorter uh, commute. He's but... influencing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's a good example to your kids. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You know. So that and the, what was the other one? Oh, I bring my notebook too because. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Jay always said, smart people take, take notes. notes. Yes. That's good. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So that was our, I guess my earliest memories. And then we've had a lot of opportunity to work together yep. at Cedar Park. Yeah. Um, yeah. Different worship things through the, yeah. The worship ministry. Thinking like even the timelines, cause it was probably, um, I probably first got involved with worship at Cedar Park in my, when I was 16 or 17, probably. 
and youth group stuff. Okay. And I mean, and you were, you were doing that back yep. in the day and yep. in the canvas days and, yep. you know, doing stuff at North Shore Peter and Aaron. all the things. Yeah. So Andy. many camps yep. and. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. A lot a of lot. things along the years. So yeah. Yeah. That's been fun. Yes. And like, you know, church ministry for all of those out there listening who are involved in their churches and mm-hmm. who, whether they're on staff or lay ministry, but, um, you know, has its blessings and its challenges. And I think, uh, one thing I love about it is that you become friends with the people that you're working with, you know, yeah. that becomes your community, yeah. you know, cause you're doing the same thing and, um, totally. and it may not be people that you otherwise would have connected with. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I love that, but I think it's also true. it's, you know, the same challenges that you face in your home or with family, you face with people you work with every day. Yep, it's right? true. You have yeah. good days and bad days. And I was thinking back to this, just one, like just to bring up an example of how we, you know, worked through those relationships and those difficult times was, well, I remember one day, just during the week, we were working on a worship night. Yeah. We were planning, <laughs> we were planning a worship <laughs> night together. You and me and Jeanette, I think it was just the three of us. I don't remember if anybody else was there. Um. And I think we sat down to like plan this idea yep. and we all kind of brought our ideas and it was yeah. like quickly we were realizing we had different ideas of uh-huh. like what would be really awesome for a worship night. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it was like a rough, rough minute. I think, I don't know. I remember I cried. I think we, <laughs> I think we were both crying and Jeanette was like, okay, okay guys. She She's was like the mediator. The yeah. The mediator. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> She's Jeanette was like the ultimate peacemaker. So yeah. Yeah. yeah and I we prayed that. it through and we worked uh-huh. it out. But then I remember shortly after that, we went through the strengths finders mm, test. Yeah. Yep. And we kind of each one on our on our team, you know, showed each other how we thought about things. Yeah. And that was so helpful to me. <clears throat> I remember in that moment realizing, oh, we were coming at this from totally different angles. And what I remember is that I love to discover things um, by doing them. Mm. And you love to do things after you've studied how yeah. other people have done them. Yeah. Like kind of that, What what's the history? Like yep. what has worked in the past? What hasn't worked? Like let's learn from the past. Yeah. And that, and I was just the opposite. And I realized we were coming into that of like, totally. I was like, let's try this. And you're like, what? It's like, that didn't work at that's, XYZ yeah. place. Like, why would we do that? You crazy lady. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. That's funny. So that was my so, take of that. Yeah. No, it was, a, it was a fun experience. And you definitely, you know, have to learn through and just kind of learn how to navigate just different mm. personalities. And I think that was a, that was a fun, uh, well, it wasn't a fun moment, but no. it was a helpful moment. Now just we kind can of laugh about it personally. Cause I think that, you know, you, when you're young, I think you don't really think about it in those kinds of terms, especially mm. maybe I'm a little more of an analytical type of a person, more yeah. of a thinker than a feeler. And so, uh, you know, it's helpful to learn that, you know, just not everyone approaches things the same. Right. And it's hard too in the church because you feel like there's a, there's a, uh, you know, a lot of, it's, you, you think of what you do as like your calling, you know, it's, it's critical that we get this right and mm-hmm. we do X, Y, Z and we feel like what's the, what's the Lord leading us. And there's kind of this spiritual aspect to the, to the, you know, leading and molding and shaping like yeah. services like that. Yeah. And so it's like, everybody takes it seriously and yeah. that kind of, that kind of, it's personal for everybody. Right. Yeah. Um, Cause yeah. it's, you know, we're, we're trying to do something that's, that's mission critical here, you mm-hmm. know? And so. But, you know, it was a good, it was a good learning moment of how it to was. navigate those differences. So. Yeah. Um, Are you, have you done the Enneagram? I sort of, I think I did it a little <laughs> bit. Uh, Michaela was kind of into it for a season. Okay. And so she was reading up on it a lot and I kind yeah. of read one of the books. I don't really remember what my numbers are. Yeah. So I know. I did do it recently mm. because we're part of the, the cohort that I'm a part of. They have us yeah. do the, the Enneagram and kind of like understand yeah. who you are. What were your, what was some of the takeaways? Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think I was a seven okay. or eight mm. wing. Oh, I'm going to get it wrong. I'll follow up with it. Okay. Something. Um. Yeah. And I think it was similar to this, this the words that, were, that are in the strings finders. Yeah. Um, like restorative, I think was a big part of interesting what I like to do. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be curious to take, I think we've talked about this in the past. I'd be curious to take it again. Yeah. Cause it's been, that was almost, uh, I was probably eight years ago, seven years ago, okay. somewhere in there. It was a while well, back. Well, they say it shouldn't change. 
I don't think they're I right. know, but I the think gal, they're wrong. <laughs> yes, my friend Stephanie, who taught it to us, yeah, she um, <clears throat> was like, "It does. You don't. You won't change. Mm. Like it'll, it'll always be the same." So, and I, I don't remember what my numbers were the first time I took yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and and it, at the time, I, did, I wasn't a believer in it, so I was kind of. I see. Okay, but now you've converted well, I don't, to. The, I mean, I don't. The Church of Jesus Christ and the Enneagram <laughs> movement. So well, I don't want to wrap myself out. <laughs> uh, say, hey, this is honest space. I know. You okay. just got to bear it all. So, okay, and, but that's it. more of a, it's more of a personality type of test, right? Yeah. Than, where a strengths finder is sort of, there's personality components to it, but I think yeah. it's more like operational. Yeah, you know? and that's true. I don't know. Maybe. So I could see it maybe being different in that respect as well, far as change goes. Yeah, that's maybe. true. I'm not sure. And then the Enneagram, the numbers that it gives you, it gives you like, um, if I'm a healthy eight, this is what it looks like. Mm. But if I'm unhealthy eight, it mm -hmm. also gives you what, it, so it kind of gives you the pitfalls of yeah. that type of personality yeah. to watch out for, which I think is helpful mm, interesting. Um, in understanding yourself. And I remember she said, uh, I don't know, she, I think she was quoting somebody, I'm talking about my cohort leader, that when the more that you understand yourself, the more you understand God. Mm. Hmm. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. At first I was like, what? But then I think it's just that, you know, it's taking time to understand the way that God made you mm. and yeah. being okay with that or yeah. seeing the good parts of it and mm -hmm. also the challenging parts of who we are. Yeah. I think that's a good humble place to be. Sure. Recognizing yeah. that we all have strengths and weaknesses associated with our strengths too. Sure, yeah. You know, like if if we're a life submitted to Christ, that hopefully he's doing that refining work on our strengths and we, yeah. you know, becoming more like him, submitted to him. But if we're, you know, we have these strengths, but it's not sub a life submitted to the Lord, you know, how does that look? And yeah. The differences and... It's true. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So... Check I'll, it out. Well, I'll have to. I'll have to finish the book. So yeah, I, know I, pr I probably got about halfway through. I don't think I did any sort of a test to sort of identify. Michaela has some guesses. I know Megan has been way into the Enneagram, so she's she's made some guesses okay. too. But I don't really remember. I'll have to. Well, I'll have to refresh. Maybe if you're watching this and you're into it, you know, maybe share some of your insights on the. In the yeah. comments. Yeah. And if you're watching and you know me, then maybe you could just tell me what my numbers are. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It's a ton of questions. Okay. Like you have to spend like <clears throat> 20 or 30 minutes, like answering all these questions and well, which I'd be is curious also to hear stressful. People's best guess. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everyone put your guesses in about what there you go. think Jordan is there based on what we've already said <clears throat> so far. I hear someone at my door, but we're not going to get it. <laughs> We'll just let it ride. Sure. Sweet. Um, okay, so you did worship ministry at Cedar Park for a while. Yep. And tell me a little bit about what you're doing now. Yeah, so... Things you're passionate about. Things, things I'm passionate about. So yeah. many things. So many things. I mean, you know, a lot of it is just work and family right now. But the in, in general, work-wise, so I was... Yeah, like you said, I was on staff at Cedar Park for... It was from 2012 to 2020, the end of 2020. So about eight years ballpark roughly. Yeah. Uh, so eight and a half. And now, yeah, I have a video production business and do content for uh, businesses and brands, do a lot of social media stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, web promotional videos, testimonials, things like that. Kind of just help people grow their presence online and get their message out about what they do. So, um, but yeah, so I've got that. And then for those that don't know, I'm married, have three kids Two twin boys, Cutest. Mason and Kay. They're six now. Uh, and, well, I guess they're almost six and a half. And then wow. Jane is about to turn, I'm trying to think the year, is about to turn two. She's so, so cute. I saw your post this morning of her. Yeah. Was that this morning? Yeah. Her coming, sitting on your lap while yeah. you were working. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. She kind of goes like she's every like two weeks, probably she kind of oscillates between being a daddy's girl and mama's girl. Aww. And so right now she's in a big dad, yeah. uh, dad mood. And I so. Love that. Yeah. Uh, I love it too, but I'll, I also like, I do have some work I need to get done today. So, uh, but she's like, every time I would try to get her out of my lap, she'd be like, no, 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 no. 
That's so cute. Michaela came down. Oh, she's like, gosh. tried to, she's like, all right, dad needs to work. And she's like, no, no, oh, no. And how do you like say no to that? I, I you, it's, no. you got to trick her psychology, you know, so <laughs> I can always right now she's way into trampoline. She loves, okay. I've got a little trampoline. Uh, and she loves bouncing on it. And so, of course. Uh, yeah. So if I say you want to go boom, she'll be like. So you didn't like trick her into starting a podcast? <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> she's got to got to trick her into getting out of my lap and uh -huh. then I can ease her upstairs yeah. to yeah, hang out with the boys for a little bit. So. Well, I have to prepare yeah. you. I, I realized because, you know, we have four girls mm. um, when they were little, you know, they need mom. Mm -hmm. Mom's it, you know, for yeah. all the things they need. But now since they basically became teenagers and on yeah it's like the the times that they need dad and really dad's the only one that can do it for them yeah is crazy <clears throat> what kinds of things well it's usually like i gotta do my taxes like oh yeah help with that or my car's broken mm. it's a lot of car things which i mean jay's good at that so he yeah. can he they know that he can help them sure sure uh traditional any dad forms stuff. that they don't understand how to yeah. fill out or yeah which, I mean, not to be sexist, like some women could do that, but yeah. it's just not my field of sure, sure. <laughs> expertise. Yeah. Um, and even like, I would say even like relationship stuff and mm. emotional things, like you would think like, oh, I'd want to talk to mom about that. But, but you know, obviously God gave dads to, sure. you know, to children. And so yep. that influences I just think it's more important to older your girls, your, your girl will get yeah. um, your input your presence in her life is doesn't get like less needed it yeah. becomes just different or yeah 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 well i'm looking forward yeah. to seeing her grow and, and yeah. the boys too it's, yeah. it's fun so yep yeah we don't have boys so i don't know about that but now we have son-in-law <clears throat> yeah one soon to be son-in-law so yep. it's happening we're getting our boys yeah. just later in life yeah maybe someday you'll get some grand boys yeah and so then you'll get to you'll get to get a little taste of it. So yes, <laughs> I hope so. Hope soon. And so you you're also um, attending the our Kenmore campus. Yeah, and serving there. And like yep. what ways are you helping out over there? Yeah, I mean, kind of like with a lot of different things. Uh, you know, probably the main thing. You know, I do do a lot of worship over there. Mm -hmm. Help with worship a couple times a month, awesome. and uh, we've started doing some different videos for the church. And so I've been helping get some of that stuff going and, uh, you know, just odds and ends as yeah. things arise. You've know, been getting a, getting a small group started this last year. So that's been really cool. Uh, just getting to connect and dive deeper with people and get to know people in the church, you know. Yeah. So it's, we've been there for, since they kind of sort of just started to relaunch. relaunch yeah. And so it would have been the soft move was February, 2022. So coming up on two years. Okay. And so we've been over there since then. Yeah. And it's just been, yeah, it's been cool. It's been cool. It's been different because it's new because, you know, I've been at Bothell, like mm -hmm. you said, and since 92 or 93, somewhere in there. And so since I was a little kid, uh, first grade, I think, and uh, going over to Kenmore is, it's new, but it's not brand new because, you know, I've helped with things over yeah. the years yeah. and, you know, always known people through mm -hmm. the, through the Cedar Park yeah. family, you know, so it's been, it's been cool. Yeah. yeah. And serving in the local church is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Even if you're not in like full-time ministry, but yep. like lay ministry yeah, um, is such a blessing to <clears throat> the church body. Yeah. You know, to the totally. God. And also I think to your family, you know, mm -hmm. your kids see their parents involved in church. Yeah. Um, not just attending. Yeah. Uh, but serving yeah. is such a great example and a great way to raise a family. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think so. I, I remember last year we came to help with something for... I don't know, Kate and Mason were five. We came to help with something, setting up for Easter, I think it was. And mm -hmm. so we were, came on Saturday and we were working on some things. And he, after a while, he came up to me. They're, the boys are just kind of playing because they're a little young to help with what we're doing. And so <laughs> yeah. Kate's like, he's like, dad, this is boring. <laughs> <laughs> children. I know. He's like, can we go home? <laughs> like, why are we here? It's boring. It's boring. And I was like, oh I just told gosh. him like, you know, we're not here to have fun. We're here to help. And oh, so, that's so good. you know, yeah, it was, it was a cool, it was a cool to get to kind of have that moment, you wow. know, and I don't know if that really clicks with him, but you know, it's definitely something that I think over the years it will more and more, you know, as he learns and grows and, um, and hopefully we, we definitely want to try and at least set that example that, you know, serving is important because, uh, you know, in most churches, uh, 
pro- I mean, all churches to some degree, it's like without people stepping up and doing the things that, you know, need to be done, things don't get done, you know? And so, uh, pastors only have so much bandwidth and so much time and energy and resources. And so it really takes the whole village kind of coming together and playing, playing a small part, you know? So, um, but yeah. Where do you think that idea came from for you? Like, it, and obviously it's a part of who you are. You grew up in the church, mm-hmm. you know, was it watching your parents or your family, extended family, or, you know, how, where did that love for the church and, um, and serving also, you know, come from? Yeah, that's a good question. <clears throat> that wasn't on the list. I'll have to think about it. But off the top of my head, I think probably a, a big piece was that, you know, I know for uh, my mom, you know, uh, especially I think as we got more into our teenage years, mm-hmm. like she was increasingly, well, one, growing up, you know, we definitely had a kind of a household sort of rule that like, you don't skip church. We go, we go, whether, unless you're sick. Yeah. Right. So really sick. If you're sick or out of town. Yeah. <laughs> Sniffles. No, you're no. gone. Now, now post COVID, the rules have changed for some people a little bit, but <laughs> if you're not throwing up, That's you know, right. or in serious pain, you're going right. Mm-hmm. So, and usually to both services. So that's awesome. uh, that, uh, and Sunday nights, yeah. uh, Sunday nights aren't instead, you know, that's in addition. So, uh, you know, definitely kind of grew up with that habit like that was just what we did and so it wasn't really like a question it wasn't negotiable right yeah. and so we just kind of got in the habit of 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 it being there and being in the community frequently mm-hmm. and then i think with serving i think probably really in my high school years and college years is probably when that started to uh, sort of be something that became really important you know i think uh, that was that was something that was a uh, priority, I think, in uh, a lot of our our ministry, uh, you know, when I was in youth group and and when I was in youth uh, leadership, mm-hmm. you know, there's a big emphasis on serving. And yeah. I don't know if I could pinpoint like one specific moment or yeah. sermon, but yeah. you know, that just really started to click that that was really important. And then when I got to be actually in ministry, sort of vocationally running things, you know, it's really clear that wow, there's I certainly can't do all this on my own, and <laughs> there is, you know, yeah. so much so much to be done and. Um, and we've all been made to play some kind of a part, you know? And yeah. so when, when we don't, everybody misses out. It's yeah. like all the people that you didn't get to serve miss out. Um, yeah. and then you miss out because mm-hmm. you don't get the opportunity to, you know, do what Jesus did. He came yeah. to serve and lay down his life, um, yeah. for many. And mm-hmm. so it's just kind of a small way that we can follow in his steps, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah. um, but yeah. Well, it sounds like your mom and dad like kind of laid that foundation for you. Mm. As a young kid, just you knew, and that was the same in my house. Like, yeah, we didn't ask, "Are we going to church today?" Yeah, and obviously. I mean, I asked a lot, but <laughs> Do we ask? rarely was the answer no. So, yeah, yeah. So I think that is such a great um, boundary for mm. kids to grow up in, knowing yeah. like this is what we do. It's not mm-hmm. like every week we're going to decide if there's something better happening. Yeah, um, you know, I know your mom and dad. Loved, loved the Lord mm-hmm. and devoted themselves to the church mm-hmm. um, in various ways, according yep. to the way that God had gifted them. Yep. And your mom served, like she worked at the church for mm-hmm. many, many years. She yep. was, I mean, she did everything. She was like the MacGyver Pretty much. at Cedar Park, like yeah. Pastor Dane, you know, yeah. aside from them, like yep. where would the church be today? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. She kind of had her hands in a lot of things. So. Yeah. 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 So um, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, Maybe your mom's journey. I know she struggled with cancer mm-hmm. on and off for many years. Yeah, um, and passed away, and mm-hmm. then your dad passed away before that. Yeah, and so maybe just tell me a little bit about um, kind of that season. Sure. Um, I mean, how old are you? You're thirty six. I'll be thirty seven next yeah. month. So you're just so. a baby, <laughs> just a little baby, you know. And to already have both your parents in heaven. Yeah, is, I mean, it's not. I mean, I know many people have that story, mm-hmm. but it's not the most usual and it's not the way you would imagine it to yeah. be, you know, now you're having your, your kids sure, and yeah. their grandkids. And, um, and so I know that many people are, have find themselves in that position. And I think hearing your story and how God has, mm-hmm. you know, navigated you through that season, um, maybe some of the difficult times and, and the way you've seen God working and his hand upon you. Mm -hmm. I'd just love to hear um, a little bit about that journey. Sure. Sure. Well, I mean, 
See, I meant to, I meant to actually connect with Megan because yeah. honestly, the, a lot of the timelines and it's exact, okay. you know, things, I, I don't know if I remember exactly, exactly what sister. the, That's yes, what Megan's asking. my sister. Yeah. <laughs> so she's, she's better at that sort of stuff or, you know, my aunt, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I think with kind of my, that, that season, I mean, probably started back in 2000. 10, I want to say it was okay. that my, my mom first was diagnosed with cancer, with breast cancer. And it was, uh, you know, she, she went in and did treatment and, um, you know, was on chemo for a while, but, uh, but, but got through that, you know, a couple years later it was cancer free. Yeah. Um, and so that was, that was awesome. We mm -hmm. were grateful for that. And then <clears throat> kind of fast forward to, I think it was 2017. I want to say, I think it was already 2017 if I remember right. But again, a little fuzzy on some of the dates, but she, uh, found something, went in, and it turns out that it, it was uh, back. And they were, they were even at that time, they were calling it terminal. I think it had moved to a different system. And okay. um, so they were saying that there was not going to be any, anything they could do long term, you mm -hmm. know, sort of just a maintenance, mm -hmm. kind of extend your life as long as we can and that sort of thing. And so yeah, so that was, that was definitely, that was definitely a, a shock. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it's, it's interesting because a lot of times things that are, you know, even if they're not surprising, they still hit you, uh, you know, cause it, it's not uncommon for people that have cancer to, to get it again. And so, right. uh, you know, that's certainly in just mentally in the range of outcomes, but it was definitely, definitely a, a blow when we, uh, found out. And so, uh, but yeah, so then, uh, kind of fast forward a couple years from there. I mean, it seemed like, you know, one of the things that, uh, that, you know, with, with that kind of a diagnosis, it's not, uh, as much as it's scary because it's, they use the word terminal, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like tomorrow, it's not imminent, you mm -hmm. know? And so we, we had a couple more years with mom before she passed, but, uh, you know, so probably fast forward to, to 2018. And I, I want to say it was in September or October, but in that fall, you know, in that fall 2018 to spring of 2019, that's really kind of when, when life is just kind of fuzzy because, you know. What year did you get married? Uh, 2014. Okay. Yeah. So this is a few years after we've been married. And so, but uh, yeah, so I, September, October, somewhere in that fall of 2018, uh, I remember that my mom, uh, she had a stroke mm. um, and, uh, you know, it's, we didn't really think much of it necessarily. I know she was always working a lot right. and, you know, obviously, you know, she had cancer and so she was on different you know, different treatments and doing different things. And so, uh, didn't think, you know, it, obviously that's scary, but, uh, you know, I, I didn't make the connection that like so anything else could be going on, you know, it's just, okay, yeah. had it and got through it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, from there, she wasn't quite herself again, you know, she's was starting to sort of, sort of struggle to remember things sometimes mm -hmm. and, you know, would be a little bit, a little bit more forgetful, you know, didn't quite have the energy or, you know, those sorts of things. But I mean, I would say like in general, she, she didn't seem that different, but you could tell that it was, uh, that she, she'd lost a little bit from that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but <clears throat> went kind of forward another month or so. And I think November of 2018, uh, when my dad, uh, he went in the hospital, he was, uh, having li some liver issues we found out and, uh, you know, he had, he had been, you know, not g generally not in the best health in general, but we hadn't really had any like scares or anything yeah. like that with him, you know? Uh, and so, uh, but, uh, so that was, that was kind of a, sort of a surprise, just sort of out of the blue, you know, mm -hmm. shocking again. Mm -hmm. Um, so went to the hospital, had some, some liver things and was kind of getting checked out. Uh, and was, he was in there for a couple weeks and then got discharged. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, kind of just, you know, kind of went on with, with life for a little bit. And that was right as we were kind of heading into Christmas. And I think it was, you know, we had, we had Christmas with our family and, uh, sort of a, nor it was sort of a low key Christmas, but we were all together and, yeah. you know, um, things seemed uh, normal enough. And so went into Christmas and then it was a few days after, I think that, uh, my brother found, uh, he found dad and he had, I think he had passed out or something, but he was bleeding and different things. It's not, not good. So we got, yeah. got him back to the hospital and, uh, he was in there for a few weeks and this is kind of through into the new year. And, uh, turns out basically that he had, had lost, 
liver function, his liver wow. failed, and he was having uh, he had infections and different things that you know his body just wasn't able to fight, and you know sepsis and just a lot of kind of interrelated but different issues at the same time, and so yeah. uh, <clears throat> it kind of uh, kind of we were w- in this kind of waiting zone of waiting to see if maybe something will turn around, if, mm-hmm. you know, some medicines will start working, treatments will start working and things will get sorted out. And yeah. it kind of just, just never happened, you mm-hmm. know? So, mm-hmm. uh, after about, I want to say after about three weeks, uh, he, uh, you know, I woke up to the call that, you know, dad's not going to be with us much longer. So okay. you should, should come down. And so, and, uh, it's actually just a couple days ago was the five year, Wow. anniversary of his passing. Yeah. So, so mid January, uh, he passed away and, um, kind of said goodbye to dad. Yeah. And so, uh, it was definitely, <clears throat> definitely a shock because one, I think with his passing, uh, in, in particular, it was relatively sudden, yeah. um, you know, that we, over the course of a couple months, mm-hmm. like, you know, had a kind of a scare and then things seemed like maybe, okay, they're going to be okay. Yeah. You know, have to do some treatment and maybe turn some things around with, you know, his lifestyle and whatnot, yeah. but, yeah. um, but things should be okay, you know, to, uh, he's gone, yeah. you know? And so it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you, you don't really have like mentally, I didn't really have like a, kind of a category or a framework for how to handle this. Like right. this wasn't in, uh, this wasn't in the plans, you know, like, what do we, what do we do here? Where do we go from here? You know, yeah. what's this look like for our family and everything. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously for mom having, you know, that she's not in the greatest of health right. generally. Yeah, she's sick. Um, yeah. So she's sick. And so what are we going to do with her and all, you know, all these things yeah. and take care of her. And, and so all those kind of questions start to yeah. emerge and sort of, I mean, at the, at the same time, you know, we're, we're kind of in the, I think from early of that December, so about six weeks before we were in the process of moving, um, houses, mm-hmm. we had bought a new place or mm-hmm. uh, that's, that's another story. We talk about that different time, but we're in the process <laughs> of moving. And so like all of our stuff is packed in boxes yeah. in our house, you know, and so life's kind of chaotic. We had the two young uh, boys at mm-hmm. the time. And so things are a little crazy. Yeah. And so and then we got obviously working through all the family stuff as well. And so it's just, it was kind of a chaotic season in a lot of ways. But so we, after, uh, after dad passed away, we went to, uh, you know, started kind of doing more family things together. We're making a point. We had, Mm -hmm. had a lot of dinners and family, family hangouts and things in those weeks that followed, you know, just kind of like connecting and kind of working through it together, I think in some ways. And it was, Probably the, I think the couple days after his memorial service uh, is in early February that we went out to dinner. I remember we went out to Outback Mm. uh, because my brother was really, he was in a big, he loves steak. And so he was in a big, (laughs) I know, right? Everybody does. So he was in a big kind of steak, steak, uh, steak mood. And so we went out, went out to Outback and just kind of, just kind of noticed that uh, mom just wasn't really all there. Mm. Like she was not, you know attentive and engaged with, you know, the conversation yeah. and was kind of like staring off into the windows and doing things, which, you know, is fine in of itself, but that's just not her. That's yeah. not her, yeah. you know, that's not normal. Yeah. Um, she's normally, you know, just yeah. very, very engaged and attentive yeah. and yep. um, concerned with whatever the people are in front of totally. her. Right? So it uh, just seemed a little off. Yeah. And so, you know, the next few, I think the next week or so there was just more, just things along those lines, you know, where she was just kind of forgetting things more, mm-hmm. you know, and, and forgetting uh, where she put things, forgetting details about work or couldn't remember this or that. And um, to the point where, you know, we were really concerned and uh, she went into the hospital, got some tests and it turns out that they, she, her cancer had spread to her brain. So mm-hmm. um, she had a big, big tumor uh, in her, in her brain. Wow. And, uh, that was what caught was causing all those issues. And yeah. so, you know, right on the heels of sort of, sort of grieving and working through stuff with dad, we find out that things are not looking good with mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that, that, that timetable that was sort of felt indefinite was, mm-hmm. you know, starting to feel a little, a little more definite. Right. And so, uh, <clears throat> from there, you know, she went into surgery, had the, had the, had the tumor removed and the surgery, surgery went really, really well. 
uh, I, and I think they, you know, as far as they could tell, they got everything mm -hmm. and it looked good. And um, even from there, you know, the surgeon was kind of saying that as far as the success, like it was sort of a 50, 50 shot. I think that it, it could work. It might not, right. um, but the surgery went well, but uh, you know, the sort of recovery that they were expecting to happen, if it was fully successful, it just didn't really happen. Right. And so, yeah, she never really got, got kind of back to her normal self, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, obviously the brain surgery, like yeah. that's going to take a while, even for a healthy person, exactly. right? Uh, even if everything else is, is normal and good. But, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, then we, we found out a bit later that, uh, the tumor had grown back and it mm -hmm. was, um, I think it was roughly wow. the same size already in a, in a span of weeks, um, wow. as it was. And so, uh, at yeah. that point they're kind of like, there's not really, yeah. you know, anything that, that we can do except it's just kind of make really things discouraging. Yeah, totally. And so, uh, just kind of make things easier and, you know, it became clear that, you know, the time was kind of drawing near. And so she, we had her kind of come into hospice, uh, with my, and we did a in-home hospice care with at my grandparents place. They live just right across from the church, not, not too far, five yeah. minutes from here. And so, um, a lot of people came through and visited and checked in yeah. and, uh, you know, went through, kind of worked through those last few weeks, uh, together. And, uh, then she, uh, it was the day after Easter 2019 that she passed away, uh, that Monday, Monday night. And so we said, mm. good, say goodbye to mom, but yeah, mm. that's kind of the, that's kind of the yeah cliff notes it's version just, of the story, but. I just remember, you know, the closeness of your mom and dad's passing together. Mm, yeah. And just how like, you know, one of those on their own is traumatic mm -hmm. enough yeah. and a lot to process. And totally. And then you, you know, going through obviously your young family and moving. And mm -hmm. um, do you, did you find that even in that moment, like, did you find yourself processing a di and still processing at different times in different ways now that you've maybe when life settles down a bit, you know, yeah. after you guys moved into your new house and it's like the reality kind of sets in, like, did you have that moment or did you feel like you were able to, you know, process well along the way? Yeah. That's a great question. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, one, I think, man, everybody deals with grief differently, you know, and everyone, uh, everyone's situation is unique, right? Uh, because, well, one, their context is different. Their life is different. Their, you know, yeah. family is different. Yeah. All, all the things are unique. And so I don't, I certainly don't know if there's a, or I certainly don't think there's a, a right way or a wrong way, right? Um, you know, I think uh, for me, when, when my dad passed away, I definitely felt like this is, you know, sort of earth shaking, you know, and, uh, which it would be for, for most people. Yeah, right. But then when we lost mom, it was like earth shattering, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like, I, I don't know what, like, what does life even look like yeah. now? You know, cause yeah. you have these people that you grew up with, obviously they raised you and that you've, uh, you know, I was grown and been out of the house for a while at that point, but, uh, you know, that, they've always been a part of your life. Yeah. And now you don't have to imagine what it would be like to be without them. It's like, now you have to live it. Right. And so, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was really tough. I mean, I think, I think for me, uh, man, <clears throat> a lot of it was, a lot of it was sharing, you know, memories with mm -hmm. the family and, and kind of getting to relive some of those things together and, and, you know, walk through some of those things together. We did in those, that year after, uh, but I think especially in those months after, like we did a lot of, a lot of family dinners with the siblings and I, you know, and uh, just kind of getting together, hanging out. And then, yeah. you know, obviously as you're, you're working through a lot of stuff with the estate as well. And those things like, you know, we you know, worked on a lot of those things together and uh, there's that. I mean, I think for me is also just like a lot of, a lot of sort of, finding moments of solitude and, you know, where I could just kind of be alone, you know, I'm a, I'm a processor. And I feel like for me, a lot of times that's, that's where I kind of, you know, work things out in my head and my heart. Yeah. And so finding those, finding those things, you know, it was, it was hard because 
in the in that in that season i we had so much going on and then also with well i, I think in the in the church you have one of the cha- one of the challenging things i think about being in ministry is that uh, for most people in the church, you have sort of three spheres, right, uh, of your relationships in life. You've got your family and friends, you've got your work community, and then you've got your church community, right? But when you work in the church, like all of that is collapsed into one, right? Your family is your friends and your coworkers are your yeah. family and all of those people are your church community, you know? And so uh, I think especially for for my mom, how... She, she also worked at the church where I worked and my grandpa worked there, you know, they've both been there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And so everybody knew, you know, everybody knew Cheryl and everybody loved Cheryl to, she's one of those people that to know her is to love her. Right. So, um, but, uh, you know, I think in kind of that season of kind of working through that grief and trying to figure out what does this mean? What, where do we go from here? You know, uh, it was, uh, it was a blessing, but also a challenge, I think in some ways that, that, that was my context, right? Because, you know, for me, I'm just like, I just need to be alone for a bit, you know? And if I didn't work in a church, well, my, my work could be a place where I'm just kind of alone and can, you know, I don't know the people as well, maybe, or so you don't, (laughs) that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, but it was tough because, uh, you know, I, I, worked at the church and was involved and, and everybody there knew my mom too. And so they were grieving too, you know, it was a loss for everyone. Um, not just me. And so it was, it was hard to find, you know, it's hard to find, uh, moments and ways I think to kind of, uh, find kind of that avenue for, for me to work through it. Um, because a lot of times when you're, when you're grieving together, it's like people, they're trying to support you, but you're also supporting them too, yeah. kind of in a yeah. way, you know? And so, which is, that's just the nature of it. But, yeah. uh, but for me, I, I, you know, I, I definitely had to, had to find moments. I, I did a lot of work on the house. <laughs> we had kind of a stretch. Okay, so that was your uh, outlet. <laughs> yeah. We had kind of a stretch before we'd moved in, yeah. um, where there's a lot of stuff we needed to do. And so yeah. I was just like, let me just go and, you know, I'll work on stuff and, just kind of think through this and, yeah. you know, pray through it and, and try and try and work through this somehow. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, and that's, that's sort of, I think what it looked like for me, but yeah. Yeah. Well, your, your family, all of them mm. is, you know, they're wonderful people. And so like knowing you, mm-hmm. I mean, I've known you and I've known all of them, <clears throat> mm-hmm. you know, our whole life too. Yeah. Um, and so just remembering all the times we, you know, we prayed, Mm-hmm. For your mom and dad and but particularly your mom because she was you know fighting cancer on and off for quite a while you know and just uh walking that journey mm-hmm. a little bit you know from our perspective and and um as the as your friends just grieving with you guys and yeah um praying for you and um you know i i can't imagine what it's like i haven't lost to my parents mm-hmm. um Lost a couple of my grandparents. Yeah. Um, so I know a little bit about that, but our family is, you know, precious to us. Yeah. You know, who we are is like shaped by them for good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A, pro- a lot of both usually. A lot of so. both. You know, no family's perfect. <laughs> yeah. True. True. And I think, so. um, especially I've, I noticed personally, like during the holidays, uh, you know, it's like all of any issue or problem, mm. you know, within the family or loss, I think it becomes accentuated, Yeah, you know, because it's a season where everybody's talking about family, you know, making memories. And mm-hmm. then, and then you have like the social media aspect where everybody's family looks so perfect. Yeah. And then you're like, what's wrong with my family? Yeah. <laughs> right. But the truth is that there's no perfect family. Mm, yeah. It's no matter true. what their Instagram post looks like. <sighs> it's true. It's so, very true. So that's what I've started just commenting. Your family isn't perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love uh, it. Just so, kidding. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. You know, but I, but thank you for, um, just being willing to share a little sure, bit about yeah, yeah. Of that journey. Yeah. Um, what do you think, like, were there, uh, situations that were helpful for you in like processing that grief during that time? 
And now you kind of mentioned how being the fact that all your friends and your church, like yeah. all those communities are like overlapped and intertwined. It's yeah. probably not helpful. Yeah. But um, what are, what were some, maybe a helpful situation or a memorable moment that maybe it was just a time with God. Maybe it was just yeah. fixing your house and processing. That yeah. was super helpful, you know, to understanding or coming to peace with yeah. God's plan for your yeah. family. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think first off, I'd, I'd say that, you know, just sort of the, uh, the, sort of the, the church relationship and the community and, and that sort of thing. Like it's, you know, there, there was some things that were challenging about that, but that's just kind of the nature of it. But there's a lot of blessing that comes with it too, you know? So yeah. it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's just, uh, it's just, uh, having to, you know, take it as it is. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, it was, I remember the, the, for me, the, the, probably one of the harder things was, the, and probably more so with more so with my dad than my mom because my with my dad the the loss was sort of sudden like it kind of came in a in a few weeks time you know yeah. we should say and so uh, it was it was sort of sudden uh, whereas with my mom you know we kind of we kind of knew for well one we knew that she had terminal cancer mm -hmm. and so we knew the clock wasn't going to be forever yeah uh, and uh, when you know things started really taking a turn for the worse we we still had, you know, it was a few months, you know? And so by the time she actually passed, like uh, you've already started grieving for what yeah. you know is inevitable. Right. right. And so, uh, but with, with my dad, I, re I just remember the, uh, you know, a lot of people texted and my, my phone was mm -hmm. ringing off the hook <laughs> like that. And for me being like that solitude person that like processor of like, this is, I felt so much pressure that like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what I need. I don't know, you know, how to respond or if to respond or, you know, um, I, I'm just my personality. Like I hate, I hate not responding. Totally. And so like, I'm like, I want to say something, but I don't know. And I don't know how you can help. Um, but yeah. you know, pray for us, but that's, that's about it. And so mm -hmm. for me, like that was really tough. Uh, and, and it was almost uh, compounded the loss, you know, rather than, mm. um, than easing it. But I mean, at the same time, it was, uh, it was really, it was really powerful just knowing that I had people that were, you know, with me and, you know, as much as I think when you're, when you're going through something, people want to say something to encourage you. Like I want to, yeah. I feel that pressure too, or not pressure maybe, but, but you want to, you want to, you want to have something to give them to yeah. help, you know, and, but you know, the truth is, uh, there's nothing you could say that would really change anything probably, or nothing you could say that they probably haven't thought of, or, uh -huh. you know, haven't heard from six other people, you yeah. know? Um, and, uh, kind of in that season though, uh, while I really don't remember probably anything <laughs> or much of anything that people said, yeah. you know, what I do remember is the people that were there, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I don't for, like, I know Andy, for instance, like he was a big encouragement in a lot of ways in that season. And, uh, I, I don't remember any things he told me, but I remember <laughs> that he said, Hey, let's just, let's just grab lunch, you know, or let's just, let's just hang out. And we talked about probably nothing to do with family, you know, <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, Marlene and like, there were a lot of people that uh, made a point just to, just to reach out, not just even on the phone or a text, yeah. but like, Hey, pop by the office or, you know, see you in the hall or yeah. whatever. And, and not say anything, but just say, Hey, I love you, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that it meant a lot just, uh, that it's, is, is more people's presence than, than anything they could say. And just knowing that, knowing that there are people that are, you know, with you, even if they don't know how you need them yeah. to be with you and, yeah. and you don't know how you need them yeah. to be like, it's I, okay. It's, it's, yeah, it's okay. And so I, I think in addition to that, you know, obviously the, that was a, that was a big thing, but also, you know, I, for, I really found like hearing people's stories of, uh, my mom especially mm -hmm. was my dad too, but, but mom was, was really inspiring. And so I loved when people would say things like, you know, I remember your mom and, uh, it was, it was funny because there's so many people that I uh, met in those weeks and kind of months leading up while she was in the hospital mm -hmm. and in hospice people that I didn't know that are like, just had felt like she had just profoundly impacted them wow. because, 
she was really friendly in a meeting yeah. or, you know, because she just really seemed to care about them. Or, she does. She did you know, care about oh, people. Oh, absolutely. But it, it was so many of those, like, just small encounters. Like, she was just always so pleasant and sweet and thoughtful and uh, people, like... You know, it was the, I don't, it was the people that like do the alarm systems of the church. And they're like, they're like, your mom was so Cheryl lady. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and they came up to me and, you know, introduced themselves and just talked about how, uh, their, my mom had meant so much to them, you know? And for me, I was like, well, she's probably just doing her job and she's a nice lady, you know, but, but to them it meant the world, you know? And there were so many stories like that, uh, that people had just really been profoundly impacted by such small interactions or what seem wow. like small interactions, you know? And so, uh, but, but hearing those stories about, um, how, um, she had made, uh, some sort of difference in their life just by being who she was. And, uh, you know, it was, it was, uh, just a, a good reminder that, uh, you know, it, it doesn't take much to make an impact and, mm. you know, and also just that, you know, these, small ways that she just was like Jesus really, yeah. um, in, in people's life and in their world, uh, really made a lasting, made a lasting impact. And you want to, you know, I think, I think all of us want to know that we're making a difference in some way that like the world is, is different because we were in it and, you know, because we did what we could do and we're yeah. called to or whatever. Uh, and hearing about how much of an impact she made just from, you know, her small stature, her quiet demeanor and, uh, you know, sitting in her office or walking (laughs) through the halls, you know, was, was really, was really helpful for me, I think in that, in that grieving process. So she treated everybody like they were somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even the delivery person Mm -hmm. or the, um, fire alarm people, Yeah, all the people that she got to connect with, yeah. you know, and I think it, what it shows you is that not everybody does that. And the, they probably encountered a lot of people who didn't treat them well, Yeah, you know, totally. and so she impacted them because she was that cheery voice, yeah, smiling face, yeah. you know, respectful, yeah. thoughtful. Yeah. She was so thoughtful. She was. Always yeah. went above and beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how have you seen your life changed um, because of, of the loss of your parents? Like, have you found yourself, you know, thinking about things differently or, you know, treating people differently or situations differently or, yeah, you know, how have your eyes been opened or how, how do you feel like you've been impacted? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, <clears throat> I think probably for most people, you know, there's, you have a lot of regrets, right. About, mm. um, things you did or didn't do. And, uh, you know, the, things you wish you'd said, but you didn't get a chance to say, or, you know, whatever. And I think there's, there's definitely, there's definitely a lot of those. (laughs) Mm. And, uh, you know, probably the, probably the hardest thing is just thinking about how, you know, for me and, you know, my siblings too, it's like, there's so many things, you know, kind of going through life and, you know, I think specifically like parenting, you know, that like, I want to ask them why they Mm. did a certain thing or, you know, why did you, not let us, you know, do this or, you know, what, what were you, what were you, what were you thinking, you know? Uh, but kind of like peer into, into their world and understand. And, and also Mm -hmm. just like, you know, what was, what was going on in our family then, you know, like what was this or that? And so there's a lot of those ways that, you know, I, I just wish I could talk to them about stuff and have, you know, access to the past in that way. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think, you know, as a parent, especially that's, that's probably one of the main things I feel like is, is like, man, I, that I, I feel, uh, grieved to miss out on. But, mm-hmm. um, as far as, you know, as far as change, I think the kind of the flip side is, uh, while, you know, I wish that there were a lot of things I could say and, and do and, and tell them, um, you know, I think I've, I've shared in the past that, you know, with kind of growing up, my relationship with my dad wasn't always super strong and, uh, you know, we didn't have any, huge beef or anything. But I think when, you know, when, uh, when I was younger, I always kind of felt like he was a little more into the stuff my brother was doing, mm. you know, in sports and things like that. And I was the Bible quiz kid that, you know, had all my church relationships and was connected there and plugged in there. And that was kind of more mom's thing. And so I felt like kind of over, over, you know, my teenage years, 
uh, like I felt a lot closer with my mom than with my dad. Um, and you know, I think my, my hunch is like, that wasn't intentional on his part. It was just kind of more practical than anything, you know? And so, um, but you know, we never really had that. We never really had like as, as deep of a relationship as I, you know, as I wish we had had. And so, uh, you know, I think kind of the, the takeaway is just that, you know, I, I want to do everything that I can to make sure that that's not what my kids have, you know, that, that even if I can't write, even if I can't, uh, you know, write my wrongs from when I was younger and, and try and, you know, do the things that I would want to do to sort of, uh, heal that relationship or grow it to be, you know, stronger than it, stronger than it was when I was younger. Uh, you know, what I can do is I can <clears throat> kind of help shift the legacy of that still, yeah. you know, to, um, to make it so that, you know, just me and my boys are as, you know, as close as we can be. Um, and so like, uh, like what, you know, I know a father and son should be and, mm-hmm. or fathers and sons should be. And then what, you know, what I, what I think I know that my dad wanted to, you mm-hmm. know, and so, yeah. and I think you learn too, that w- probably one of the, in, in kind of reflecting on that sort of, sort of grief and, and regret, you know, I think, as you, I think I grew up in my teen years and even into my twenties and even in, up until recently, like a lot of the things that you kind of assume are true, aren't true. Yeah. You know, like there's a lot of things you think, you know, about your parents, but there's more going on that you don't understand, you know, and there's right. context and parenting is harder than you think it is when you're a kid. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And <they're> like, <laughs> There's so, so many of those things where I like, I know like now that, you know, so many of those ways that like I've learned from experience that the way I thought about him was wrong. And I, I wish I could give the grace that I want to give, you know, now, um, I wish I could tell him that, you know, I, I gave you too hard of a time, you know, (laughs) like I was probably more difficult of a kid than my boys are. And so (laughs) I get it, dad, you know, uh, it's like, it's like those sorts of things. Um, but you know, I think it's just the, the biggest thing is just knowing that, uh, you don't know how mo- you don't know how long you have, you don't know how much time you're going to be with the people that you're with. And, uh, it could be a day, it could be a year, it could be 30 or 50 or, you know, you just, you don't know. And so I think just that, that sense that, yeah, building and investing in those relationships is, is urgent. It can't wait, you know? And so, um, obviously you just take things a day at a time, but, uh, but you, you want to make the most of the time you have. Yeah. Um, so, cause you don't know how, you don't know how much more you have. So I think what I heard you say from that is that, um, even if you have kids that you aren't like you or you don't necessarily relate to, mm. um, that there always is some co- contact of relation that you can find. Yeah. You know, maybe something that you can do together, yeah. um, a way that, you know, you can connect with that kid on their level. Mm-hmm. Um, even if it's not your favorite thing. Yeah. You know, it's easy when our kids are passionate about things we're passionate about to yeah. find those connections. Cause it's like, yeah. Oh yeah, I love this too. Or I love singing totally. or I love music or, totally. um, but maybe you have a kid who's, you're like, I don't get them. I don't relate yeah. to anything. So ask God, like, what is, what is something that yeah. I can find to connect with them on? Yeah. Even if it's something small. Um, cause I think that shows that person that, um, you're, that they're valuable to you, even if mm. you're not the same, mm. even yeah. if you don't necessarily understand mm-hmm. the way that God made them. So I think that is something that I took away from just, you know, Absolutely. that story. Yeah. Um, and yes, we all need to give our parents more grace. We do. <laughs> every parent is doing the best they can yeah. with what they know. Totally. And I'm yeah. sure everybody has regrets about yeah. their parenting. Or, yeah. um, well, so how do you go ahead? Well, I was going to say, it's weird too, thinking that when, you know, when you're a kid, like I feel like, you know, when my parents were, well, when my mom was in her 30s, that would have mm-hmm. been in the 90s. So I would have been like eight or nine, 10, uh-huh. 11. And you think that your parents, know so much more than they know, you know, like you have this such a high view of them and it's right to have a high view of your parents. But, uh, but thinking back like to myself now, I'm like, this is how old my mom was (laughs) when, you know, I was this age and I'm like, yeah, like 
I don't feel like I'm equipped to do, you know, do no. half the things I'm called to do, yes. you know, as a parent or yes. a husband or all these things. And, um, you know, experience is obviously, uh, the best teacher, but no, I think, I think you're right that yes. it's, you know, pray that God would help you. Uh, I think that's, that's your, you know, your part of your calling, I think as a parent yeah. is to find, uh, find that, find that way to connect with your kids and mm -hmm. maybe even, connect with them over things that you're not that passionate about That's just good. because, you know, yeah, it's, it's important to them. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, no, I think, I think you're right. So, yeah. Sometimes my kids say things to me and all I can do is bite my tongue really, really, really hard. <laughs> it's like, uh, -huh. and then I'll go in the other room and I'll be like, Lord, what am I supposed to say? What did I do? How did what this happen? happen? Yes. What have I done? <laughs> what have we created Lord? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> I was just curious, like, what are ways that you're keeping their memory alive to your kids? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I think, you know, we have, uh, I've been, you know, especially as the boys have kind of started to get older to mm -hmm. a point where they, you know, are, they remember things, yeah. you know, things you say and things you do. Yeah. I think for me, it's kind of been, uh, you're just trying to remember the things that I loved about my dad and even the things that I knew about oh, and my mom too, yeah. but, um, that I, you know, memories that I cherish with them. And, uh, I've been trying to, you know, do things with them that my parents did with me, you know, and, uh, cause I find that those are just cool kind of gateways to talk about them, you know? And so it's, it's different when you have, uh, you know, your, their grandparents are around and they can mm -hmm. go do things with them. But, uh, when, you know, when they're not, you know, you find those ways to try and keep that memory alive. And so, yeah. you know, just recently we were, we were, uh, I'm trying to remember what, you know, actually what it was that we were doing. Cause there was a couple just recently, but we were having, <clears throat> we were having, uh, ice cream. We went out to get ice cream and Perfect. yeah, I mean, it's always a good thing. Yeah. Right. So we went and, uh, we're talking about, uh, just different flavors. What kind of, I think we went to Baskin Robbins mm. and we're like, what kind of flavor do you want to get? Yeah. There's a lot of choices. And so, uh, they're like, yeah, I'll take this. And so we're, we're picking out our stuff and just chatting. And mm. I was like, you know, when I was a kid, my dad loved ice cream. <laughs> he loved it when I was an adult too. Uh, but, uh, when I was a kid, he loved ice cream and we'd, we'd get ice cream or, you know, get like a frosty from Wendy's or things like that. And, uh, they're like, oh, is that, is that Wes? And I'd be like, oh. yeah, that's, that's your grandpa in heaven. And, and they'd be like, oh, okay. And, you know, they don't say much because they're kids. They don't know what to say. They'll ask questions and things like that. But, you know, just that he always loved Neapolitan ice cream and you can mm. get the three flavors. And so when I was a kid, I used to get the three and kind of mix them up and you know, do the things. But like just finding like <laughs> little that. things like that. Um, you know, we talk about sports and, we you know, when the Seahawks season was brutal ending, but... We, yeah. uh, you know, telling them about how, when I was, you know, when I was a kid, my dad used to love watching football games and, um, you know, just finding those, finding those little like everyday sorts of things that you can, yeah. that you can, uh, you know, are ways you can sort of introduce them, keep them in, in front of them and they can kind of access a yeah. little bit about, you know, about their life. And, That's um, good. yeah, so. That's good. And I think you even being able to emotionally have that conversation with your kids, mm. you know, shows that your heart is really like, doesn't mean that it's not sad or painful, but it's like, you can, you can share about it yeah, and not hide it yeah. or like, you know, it's like, it's not stuffed. You're able to like process your emotions. So I think yeah. that, that's very healthy. Good job. <laughs> You're doing well, great, Jordan. <laughs> Proud of you. Oh yeah. Just, so. it reminded me when we were little, mm. um, every Wednesday night, uh, we would, go drive home after church with my mm -hmm. dad, me and all three of my siblings. Yep. And we would, he always stopped by, um, uh, was it like Jack in the box or McDonald's or whatever, but we always got one tray. <laughs> it was never enough. Yeah. One tray of nachos, the cheese nachos with jalapenos on them. Okay. And that was like our Sunday or Wednesday night after church snack. That's funny. And we just love that. And she remember, you know, reminded me it's yeah. a good memory of, just yeah. the normal things of life, you yep. know, going to church every week because that's what we did. Yep. And just the fun, fun ways that you can connect with your kids, even we, in the mundane. We had that same tradition, I think. Really? Well, we were, we were for dinner. So Wednesday is always a crazy night yes. for, you know, church stuff and different things. And so, and I've told my kids this story many times because every Wednesday we would go, <laughs> McDonald's had a, I think a 29 cent a cheeseburger yeah. deal. 29 cents for a I cheeseburger. Mean, who even wouldn't McDonald's. do that? Oh yeah. No. So. <laughs> 
Uh, but uh, we'd always get a bunch of those and some fries and share them. And that was our Wednesday night tradition. I just yeah. always remember pulling through the drive through on our on, you know, on our way home after school. Yeah. My dad would make the make the order me go home, and so <laughs> whenever we've gone to McDonald's, I I tell them that story too, and they're we're starting to get to the point where some of them they're like, yeah, we know, Dad. <laughs> so, but rude, yeah, kids, seriously. Oh man, terrible. So That's good. Well, yeah. Jordan, I've really enjoyed um, talking with you and just hearing your heart and the ways that um, God has been speaking to you and helped you walk through difficult seasons. Yeah. And it's helpful to me. And cool. I know there's well, a lot there of people go. listening who can relate in different ways. Yeah. You know, apply it to their story and their situation. Cool. Hopefully it gets people thinking about, you know, their own life and how God's working. So thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. It was a joy. So maybe next time we can have Megan, she can tell her story, her she, side of the story. Yeah, I would be kind of fascinated to hear that too. Yeah, so. you're like, I need to learn some things, please. <laughs> yeah, let me let me film that episode because I, okay. yeah, I, I would I would like to hear. You'll ask questions more, off so. the side. There you go. Yes, that's true. We'll we'll have the little comment box on the screen here. Yes. The little producer <laughs> producer comments. Let's do it. You hear that, yeah. Megan? You're next. That's not how it went. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. is he even talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's a good. Good time talking about Wes and Cheryl and mm -hmm. and their lives. And we yeah. remember them yep. and um, the ways they've touched our lives and our church and our community mm -hmm. and your family. And we're excited to see them in heaven one day. Yeah. Hopefully soon. Yep. 100%. And hopefully all of us together soon. Yes. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I just am going to close this up in a word of prayer okay. and then we'll sign off. God, we thank you for this time that we had to sit down with Jordan and just hear about his family and about your grace poured out in his life. Lord, I thank you for everybody who's tuned in and listened to this podcast. Father, I pray that you would heal their hearts, God, and communicate to them in a way that is going to meet them where they're at, that they would use, that you would use parts of Jordan's story, Lord, to connect with other people and to make real life change. God, we just give you this podcast and we give you this episode and we pray that you would use it, God, for your glory and your purposes and that you would just bless all of our listeners today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you guys so much for tuning in and you know the drill. We'll see you next time. Bye.